Hey, thanks for checking out Coffee with Brett, where I talk about project management basics and enjoy a hot cup of coffee. I actually just brewed an afternoon cup and I'm ready to talk about Gantt charts. So if you don't know what a Gantt chart is, how they're used, or even why there's a second T at the end of the word Gantt, you're in the right place. Well, let's start with that last part because it's the easiest. So that extra T is actually a part of the last name of the guy who created the Gantt chart. That's Henry Gantt. And honestly, from what I understand, it seems like he didn't really create the Gantt chart or invent the Gantt chart. This guy, Adam Mecki, did. But Gantt documented it, and he popularized it, and he named it. And now he's got millions of people using the Gantt chart, some wondering what it is, and honestly, most of them misspelling it left and right. But hey, you're not here for a history lesson or even a spelling lesson, so let's jump in. So what is a Gantt chart? The Gantt chart is probably the most widely used project planning tool out there. It's essentially a horizontal bar chart used in project management to visually represent a project plan over time. On a Gantt chart, you can visualize the components of a project so that you can really just expose the important details of a project. Honestly, I like using Gantt charts because they serve as a central hub for all of the up-to-date information about my projects and really how things are gonna work. I kind of look at a Gantt chart as the story of my project. That story tells me and my team how a project breaks down into tasks, which immediately shows everything that needs to be done on the project. Then it shows when each task will begin and when each task will end, which you certainly need to communicate in terms of deadlines to stay on top of things so that you can deliver your projects on time. I also like the fact that in Gantt charts, like in Team Gantt, I can show how long each task will take in terms of estimated hours as well as calendar time. The Gantt chart will also show who's assigned to each task, so there's no confusion about responsibility. Gantt's also show how tasks relate to and depend on each other. Another important thing, you know, your Gantt chart will show when important meetings, approvals, or deadlines, or things like that really just need to happen. And they're typically signified by milestones, which, by the way, I did an episode about on Coffee with Brett, so definitely check that out if you want to learn more. So a Gantt chart will essentially show you your full project schedule from start to finish so that you can track and update how work is progressing in your project. That's a lot of work. Yes, the Gantt chart can be a very robust tool. Team Gantt does a lot more than what I just explained even, you know, including estimating, time tracking, communicating on the project and task level, which can be awesome, workload planning, reporting, and so much more. I'm not gonna lie, people are often confused or baffled by Gantt charts because they can be monsters, especially if you're working on a really big, long project. But that's the exciting part. A Gantt chart is incredibly useful because it allows you to simplify complex projects into an easy to follow step-by-step -step plan. And then it allows you to track the status of the tasks as your work progresses. They don't just show you the plan, they help you keep track of project deadlines, milestones, and hours work so that you can spot issues before your project goes sideways. Pretty awesome stuff happening in Gantt charts, especially in Team Gantt. All right, so let's talk about how Gantt charts actually work. What you're seeing on screen is a Gantt chart in Team Gantt. It plots time on a horizontal axis as a linear calendar, and we list groups of tasks or phases, tasks, and milestones on the vertical axis. We call that the task list. In the actual Gantt, we represent activities or tasks as bars, and the length of the bar represents the length of the task. As seen here, it's in days. You'll also notice the position of the task and how it's connected to other tasks in the list. That connection shows a dependency, which essentially tells us the order in which the work should be done. So if you wanna learn more of the kind of specific terms that I mentioned here and the ins and outs of using a Gantt chart, check out our complete guide to Gantt charts at teamgantt.com. There's a ton of helpful info there, but at its core, that's pretty much it. The Gantt chart is super simple. I mean, don't you love the way it visually tells the story of your project? Kind of like a graphic novel. The thing is, this is more of a choose your own adventure book because you'll update the plan as things change and as your team actually makes progress. So the plan or your Gantt chart is a living, breathing document. 
So I do want to answer one more question here before I get back to my coffee, which I'm hoping is actually still hot. But that question is, how do I know when to use a Gantt chart to manage my project? Here's my simple answer. Always, you always need a Gantt chart. You know, if you're running a project, you need a plan. But maybe that's letting myself off the hook a little too easily here. So here are a few signs that you might actually need a Gantt chart to help you successfully deliver a project on time and within budget. First, your project has a hard deadline. You know, a Gantt chart will help you to set up the tasks, reviews, and approvals leading up to that deadline, just to make sure that it's considered and it's meeting its project goals on time and within budget. Or, you know, what if multiple people or teams are involved in the project and they need to be coordinated? You know, having one single document to refer to about your current project tasks and progress will help you to keep everyone on track. So what if a boss, a client, or a team member wants to see a visual timeline of the project from beginning to end? Well, the Gantt chart is the most visual version of any plan I've ever seen. And in Team Gantt, you can also take a look at the calendar, list, and board views on top of the Gantt chart itself. Your project involves even just a little complexity, like when specific tasks need to be done in a specific order. Yeah, that one happens pretty often, right? So trust me, anytime there's any complexity, you want a plan to fall back on, to spell out the details, and to make it super clear. Uh, what about this one? Team members work on multiple projects at a time, and you need to manage their workloads. This is so tricky. Um, and this is definitely the place where your team will love the Gantt. So if you're using the, your Gantt charts across your organization, across all projects, you can gauge workloads and even team member availability using the availability feature in Team Gantt. So that kind of just powers up your Gantt chart, which is pretty awesome. All right, so the last one. You have a good idea of roughly how long each task should or can take. So why not map it out to keep your team and stakeholders within the boundaries of your project scope and timeline? Only a good system will actually help you to do that. So those are all really great reasons to use a Gantt, but like I said, do it all the time. You just need one. It's gonna help you get your projects done a lot easier. All right, I'm sure you have more questions or maybe even comments. So feel free to drop those comments and questions in the comments on YouTube and we can chat there. And while you're at it, do me a little favor and give this video a thumbs up. Tell the robots how much you like us and maybe even subscribe to our channel so that you can get updates when we release new video content on YouTube. And of course, check us out at teamgantt.com where we offer a flexible modern Gantt chart and tons of helpful project management resources for you for free. All right. I'm out of here, ready to enjoy this coffee. Have a good one. Hey!